I don't think a gap year for you should be a question at this point. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAD. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing excellent. What can I help you with today? Um, so I wanted essentially a question about gap years and just overall, like kind of what's the right reason to take a gap year and mm -hmm. what's the wrong reason to take a gap year. And I can give you a little more background on my specific situation if you want. Yeah, let's well. do it. Yeah. So I right now am, a, I guess, a rising third year undergraduate student. Okay. And so I'm in a place where either I could apply next cycle or a cycle after that. And my, I guess my con biggest concern with applying next year's cycle would be a lack of clinical experience slash shadowing. Um, so I haven't been, haven't done any shadowing since starting high school due to pandemic and other things, obviously. And so I'd be concerned that essentially only having like six months to a year of shadowing and then possibly like a more meaningful clinical experience beyond hospital volunteering, just because I know some schools are a little iffy on whether or not like patient transport is actually clinical, um, which is what I have been doing over the past year or so. So mm. I guess that's kind of a brief overview. Okay. So concern about lack of clinical experience, concern about lack of shadowing. Yeah. Sustain. Yeah. Over not necessarily like hours, but in terms of the time period of those. Yeah. So let me, let me rewind a little bit and just talk <laughs> about gap years in general. I think too many students look at gap years as a tool to help an application and, and they look at it generically, like a gap year will help my application. And that is the most idiotic thing that, <laughs> that a student can say. It's like, a gap year will help my application. Well, no, it depends on what you do during that gap year. I think too many students just think and get, they they hear that more and more students are taking gap years and students are getting accepted to medical school who have taken a gap year and therefore I should take a gap year because then I can get accepted to medical school. And there's just no logic in that. It's just students doing this like not thinking and and going, oh, this is what I should do. So you're thinking about it logically right, of what do I need to accomplish? My my eyes going crazy here when we're recording, which is perfect. Uh, but <laughs> but um, you're thinking about it logically. What in my application, what part of my journey is potentially weak that I could improve during a gap year? That's the perfect way to think about it because that's what a gap year is for, potentially. Mm -hmm. It's to look at your application, look at it through the lens of an admissions committee and go, have I proven to myself through shadowing and clinical experience that I want to be a doctor? Have I proven through my grades and my potential MCAT score that I am academically capable of getting through medical school? And if the answer is no to some of those questions, then it's like, well, maybe I should take a gap year so that I can work on those things. And so for you, I think there's this weird conundrum that we're in because of COVID or because of the pandemic that caused you to potentially miss out on some hours. It sounds like freshman year, you kind of took the time off anyway, just to get acquainted to being a student, which is perfect. And then sophomore mm -hmm. year, you're like, okay, I'm ready to do some <laughs> clinical experience, some shadowing. And then boom, the pandemic hits. And now here you're a rising, soft, or rising junior, rising third year. And you are potentially, it sounds like, thinking about being a traditional applicant to medical school, meaning you're going to apply near the end of your junior year here to start mm -hmm. medical school just a few months after you graduate from undergrad. And so the question is, between now, when things, as we're recording this, is kind of end of May of 2021, things are kind of getting back to normal, with the vaccine rollout, the cases are way, way down in the U.S. And like yesterday was like 13,000, I think. It was amazing cases. Um, good. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's like I can see the light. Um, Finally. <laughs> but, but potentially what caused you to kind of miss a year, but it sounds like you have been doing some things anyway. But mm -hmm. potentially what caused you to miss a year is the same thing that will cause the medical schools to understand why you missed that year. And so they're going to expect less of students in your situation.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess that's the line I'm trying to figure out how yeah. to toe, you know, is what, it, what is an acceptable decrease in like, for example, shadowing hours or shadowing duration, um, you know, due to COVID and then what's well at some point, you know, the pandemic can't be an excuse and you have to go find an opportunity for yourself. So yeah. I think that's the, where I'm trying to figure out on what side of the line where I am in relation yeah. to that. Yeah. And, and I don't think there's an easy answer, unfortunately. Have yeah. you done any, <laughs> any virtual shadowing during this time? Um, I've, done a little bit I was more I, w- I was hoping to like starting maybe like next month or the month after that kind of get in back into real shadowing because I have like an opportunity lined up when I'm allowed to be back in the hospital setting so I, I did a little bit of virtual shadowing shadowing but I'm I'm hesitant to rely on it although it's certainly you know good for now yeah I, I wouldn't rely on it but I would do it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think okay. a lot of students were like, oh, it's virtual shadowing. It's not real shadowing. Well, like, duh, it's not real shadowing. But <laughs> it at least shows the medical schools that you did something that you just you mm-hmm. didn't just put your feet up and were like, well, COVID, I can't do anything. So I'm just going to sit around and Netflix. Right. And so <laughs> I would do as much virtual shadowing as possible. Get those hours okay. and add them onto your application when it comes time to apply and get into real shadowing as soon as you can. Right now, okay. again, it's it's application season opens up here for the 2022 med school year, start year. You're applying, it sounds like, for med school 2023, potentially. So you have a whole year between now and then to shadow. Yes. I don't, th- I don't think a gap year for you should be a question at this point. You have, you have plenty of time between now and then to get back into these things that have been canceled because of COVID. Things are getting back to normal any day now. Hospitals should be opening up again to volunteers who are vaccinated, getting people back into the hospital, interacting with patients, people who are vaccinated, uh, because the vaccines work, right? Yay, the vaccines work. Um, It's amazing what science can do. So the, for, for you, I think it's just a matter of continuing to do what you're doing. Now, the deeper question that you kind of asked that was hidden in there was, is patient transport, t- patient transport, is that enough? Is that okay? Yes. And I would say it's not enough. I- I'm not a fan of patient transport in terms of clinical experience. It's something. Some medical schools like it. Some medical schools don't. I typically am less of a fan of it. I would consider it clinical experience. I just don't think it's very good clinical experience. I would rather (laughs) you interact in different ways with patients instead of just pushing them around. How you doing, Sally? How you doing, Mr. Johnson? And, and, okay, here, you're at radiology. See you later, right? To me, that's just, it's not very meaningful. It's not very impactful. And I've seen some good write-ups from students who had patient transport, and that's great. But I just, me personally, I don't like it that much as clinical experience. And so I would, if I were you, Try and go find other things that you can do. Scribing. Scribing is great clinical experience, again, but some medical schools don't like it because it's really just shadowing on steroids um, because you're just watching. Sometimes sometimes you're even not even in the room and, and the doctors come out and just dictate to you what, what happened. And so it's really just up to you to find something that resonates with you. If you have time to get an EMT certificate, if you have time to get a phlebotomy certificate, go be a medical assistant, depending yeah. on on the state that you live in and what those rules are. A, a lot of times you don't even need any sort of training to be a medical assistant. You just need to go get some on-the-job training and go find a private practice that will teach you how to take vitals and, and check people in. So yeah. lots of opportunities over the course of this next year. And remember, for AMCAS specifically, they tell you to project out estimated date of completion up to the start of medical school. So for you, that would be August of 2023. And then estimate those hours as well that you're going to do over the application cycle. Yeah. And that's right now I have like an application out for a part-time job working as a newborn hearing screener. Great. Uh, And then I'm also, I am trying to get my EMT certification over the course of uh, the fall semester. Okay. So... You, you're thinking about all of the right things. So for you, I don't think you need a gap year at this point. I wouldn't I wouldn't okay. make that decision to say, I need a gap year to work on my application. Now, there's a completely different discussion. If you want to do a gap year to do something <laughs> else, that's mm-hmm. a potential just other discussion, 
But I guess kind of one of my other questions is about when you have more than 15 activities, I'm specifically looking, just talking about AMCAS here. Um, when you have more than 15 activities, what do you think is a good way to go about prioritizing what makes it onto the application and what doesn't, you know, it's about, you know, balancing, you know, if you need more hours in X category or impact that kind yeah. of thing do you have any thoughts on yeah. what might take priority yeah there? i i go against the trend here if, if you go on to a, any websites or other people that tell you what to do it's all about crafting your application right you need to show some leadership over here and show some some goodwill and volunteering over there and you definitely got to have research and publications here and and for me outside of the core you need to have proven to yourself that this is what you want, and you do that through shadowing and clinical experience. Those are the two most important things that have to be on an application to show the medical schools that you've proven to yourself, right? Not for them, it's for you. Outside of that, I think the application should be a story of who you are. What have you done? What have you spent your time with? And what was that impact on the world that you had? Or what was the impact of that on you? And so when you look at it from that angle, you're talking about the most impactful things in your journey. Not necessarily, ooh, I need to show some leadership. So I'm gonna put this one thing where I was kind of a leader, but I didn't really like it and don't really have much to say, but I can mark it as leadership. And But if they talk about it, if they ask me a question about it, I really don't wanna talk about it, right? You don't wanna get into that situation which is why I hate crafting the application like that. So I would create a list of things, of, of everything that potentially could go on an application. Obviously go through the top ones that are like, yes, like this was awesome. I love this. I would love to talk about it. Put that on the application. Anything that really takes up big chunks of time, I would probably put on the application just to show what you've been doing with your time. And then outside of that, the things that are left over, think about, can I combine these potentially with something? Is this a mm -hmm. similar activity to something else with maybe a similar impact, similar takeaway, similar kind of what did it mean to me? Maybe I can combine that with another activity. Honors, awards, recognitions, obviously you can combine shadowing experiences. I don't think should take up more than one activity typically, unless there's just one that that blows everything else out of the water. Uh, and then outside of that, you just cut the rest. Mm -hmm. the, In terms the, of hold on, the application, oh, just, just one other thing, because, because a lot of students get confused about this. The application, mm -hmm. those 15 activities is not your resume. It's not a CV. It's not a step-by-step, -step, this is everything I've done in my journey. So many students, especially non-traditional, I know you're not in that situation, but it sounds like you've done a ton of things. So many students are afraid of not mentioning something that they're like, well, well, what if they realize that I did this other thing it's not on my application? That's not what the activity section is for. The activity section is, here are the 15 things I want you to know about. And obviously, I'm a human being that has plenty of time for other things, maybe. Uh, and I've done other things. I'm just not going to tell you about those things because they're not really important. In terms of combining activities, um, I'm assuming that for me, research will be one of the things I list as one of my most meaningful. Do you think um, kind of at the end of that most meaningful description, cutting that slightly short and putting something like a poster you had in there for the sake of saving slots? Do you think that, what do you think of that? as a strategy, I guess. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. Again, you would be doing it because you're like, oh, I'd really need to make sure they know I did a poster too. <laughs> Potentially. If Is the yeah. poster related to the same research? Yes, yes. Yeah, then it could probably just go into the description. And then the most okay. meaningful, the, the reason I hesitate for the most meaningful is because the most meaningful essay is really like, why was this most meaningful to you? You're answering that mm -hmm. question in that 1,325 characters. Okay, so that'd be something that would be better in the initial smaller activity description. The description, yep. Okay, yeah. And I guess the last thing I had kind of in a similar vein is also just about categorizing activities. Mm -hmm. um, and for things that can fall under multiple categories, again, is that just, you know, kind of, you know, the balance between where you think it fits best slash where you think, you know, 
uh, like additional hours might be beneficial without like stretching what the activity is just like as an example um I do like a little bit of work with like a student-led nonprofit and it's so I work I'm working with other students, but, you know, the nonprofit as a whole is affecting the community. But for example, I don't work one-on-one like with community members. So for me, that's a little like, oh, is that leadership or is it community service because it's a nonprofit? Um, just as a brief example. Yeah. I, I think you just go with your gut with what, what you okay. think it is, what it aligns with. Again, the, there's no rules to this. A lot of it is just going to be very subjective. Here's what I want to put it as and just, mm-hmm. just go with that. I think that's all my questions I had. Well, good. Talk to me about the MCAT. How are you going to be preparing for the MCAT? Um, well, today I'm going to be doing chapter eight of the Kaplan chemistry books. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I am I am currently in the process of studying for the MCAT and I've signed up for an end of August test date. Um, end of so August. Why so early? So um, for a couple of reasons, one, my prereqs are complete, so yep. that's not going to harm me in any way. And then the other reason is due to COVID. I've had a number of summer study abroad programs get canceled. Um, and just with the way with the timing, it makes the most sense for me to study for the MCAT during the summer and also to do those programs during the summer. And so it's essentially choosing to study for the MCAT on the earlier side, aka this summer, or um, basically not be miss out on a study abroad program. So. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So remember, one of the most important things with the MCAT is doing practice questions, Yes. doing full-length exams. Blueprint MCAT has the best full-length exams outside <laughs> of the AAMC. So if, if you need some full-length exams, go check out Blueprint. And then also, as we're recording this, just a couple days ago, they released their, their flashcards for free at uh, yes. MCATflashcards.com. I don't know if you saw that. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I did see that. I took their um, half-length diagnostic, and I really, I, the, all the analytics and everything were really, really nice to be able to look at afterwards, um, yeah. even just as a starting point. So. Very pretty, very pretty yes, stuff. Yes, very nice. <laughs> well, cool. <laughs> done a well, great job with that. So. Congrats uh, on your success this far. Good luck moving forward with the MCAT, with your study abroad stuff, with finishing out this journey, <laughs> and good luck with the application cycle. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and all of your great content. It gives me a wonderful, productive thing to do during long hours of lab work. So really appreciate it. You're welcome.